Hi and welcome to Biostock's TV studio here in Stockholm. With me here today we have Erik Gatenholm, the CEO of Baiku Group, and Hector Martinez, the CTO of Baiku Group. First, I would like to congratulate you both on winning the Sweden Bio Award. Thank you so much. This is really exciting and we, of course, want to thank Sweden Bio for this wonderful opportunity. We will uh, get back and talk more about the, the award uh, later, but I would like you to start with, could you tell us a little bit about Baiko Group? What, can you, what do you do? Sure. Baiko is the world's leading bioconvergence company. Uh, and our vision as a company is to create the future of health by providing products, technologies, and services that enables us to create, understand, and master biology. So for instance, technologies that can enable printing of human organs and tissues that can in the future be used for transplantation. Uh, the National Nonprofit Association for the Life Science Industry in Sweden, Sweden Bio, uh, said in their motivation that this year's Sweden Bio Award was given to bioconvergence company Baiko uh, for showcasing the power of the Swedish life science industry and the global arena for their visionary business model and remarkable growth. Very nice. It's, we're very thankful for that. We, we thank Sweden Bio for these very kind words. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your business model and the reason for why you managed to grow so fast? Of course, and, and I think uh, the description aligns very well what we're doing as a company in terms of expanding on a Swedish technology that has really enabled researchers and scientists to do revolutionary scientific work, whether that's in academic settings or at pharmaceutical companies. But as a legacy business, Baiko started off with providing 3D bioprinters and bio inks that can be used for printing of human tissues and organs. And then what we were able to do by working very closely with our customers and collaborators was to expand that business with complementary products and technologies. Uh, many developed here in Sweden in this beautiful, beautiful country with a lot of great scientists and researchers. Um, and then we were able to essentially scale that business globally. Today we have about 25,000 instruments placed around the world, uh, about 1,000 colleagues, and more than 9,500 scientific publications where they're using our products. Uh, Hector, I would like to ask you, um, what, what can you do to get a successful product placement and a breakthrough on the market? Very good question. It's important to realize you know, where the innovation or where the market where we want to uh, introduce uh, certain products. What I would like to highlight is our early work with uh, researchers and scientists, uh, you know, picking up technologies from the early phases, uh, developing, maturing those technologies together with scientists, users that are solving scientific, very challenging scientific questions, and being able to mature these products together with the community around us. So taking it from one lab and, you know, maturing the instrument or the, the technology and being able to use our existing network, our community, to be able to deploy those technologies uh, worldwide. Uh, so, of course, we have been working with all the leading institutions here in Sweden. They have been pivotal to, to our success. Uh, Karolinska, uh, Lund, uh, Uppsala, and, and, and Gotham, where Chalmers, uh, really good biotech hubs. Uh, and, of course, we, can, we have a lot to learn from, from these uh, scientists that have been working in these uh, uh, universities. Uh, what should you consider uh, when choosing a market and sales strategy? So when choosing a market, you know, we have, we have seen that uh, there are a few markets, uh, U.S. being one of them. Uh, in, in Europe, definitely Sweden is one of the, one of the big markets for, for highly innovative, high-tech products. Uh, so, you know, those are the markets that we usually go for. We know that there's uh, customers, there's scientists, there's a lot of uh, funding both in early research as well as in, in pharma diagnostic companies. Uh, so there is a lot of interest for the type of products that we develop. Uh, so obviously we go for these markets early on. We test them uh, quite uh, early in the research uh, market and then migrate or move these, uh, these products throughout the, the chain into drug development, drug discovery, as well as the manufacturing of uh, healthcare products. Mm -hmm. And I can add, of course, to the sales strategy that we've been very successful with, at least in, in, in my opinion. Uh, well, what we've been able to do is really establish a direct sales force in the most critical markets. So look at, for instance, as Hector mentioned, the U.S. 
it's it's 50 60 percent of our revenue depending on of course uh, which quarter we're talking about but we're looking at essentially a direct sales force catering to the researchers and scientists in those markets same thing in Europe as well um, where we can really work closely with our customers ensure that they get the best service and products that they need to solve their challenges mm. Something that's uh, growing uh, increasingly important for many companies around the world, not just life science companies, is uh, CSR and ESG. Um, how can you use CSR and ESG to build value and create success? I think it's a good question and I, I believe that it's uh, more relevant than ever today to, to work with these aspects. And I'm, I'm proud to say uh, with our excellent colleagues around the world, uh, CSR and, and, and ESG are things that have been part of our backbone from the early beginning and something that we have been working with continuously and will continue to work on. Uh, it's going to be an increasingly uh, important strategy for us moving forward as we want to ensure that we provide the greatest workspace for our colleagues around the world. We want to ensure that we have a sustainable growth while it's very aggressive and fast. It still has to be sustainable. Uh, we want we want to ensure that we work with a uh, environmental sustainable agenda and one of the great examples that i have that we're doing is that we're actually reducing the use of animals being used in research and this is both for cosmetic product development but also for pharmaceutical product development and we have up to date saved hundreds of thousands of animal lives by replacing with our technologies and products and that's something i know that all of our colleagues and and customers are very happy about what is your view on the future uh, and potential for the life science industry and what are your thoughts on uh, Health 4.0? It's a great question and I think Sweden as well as many other uh, leading uh, life science countries and geographical locations today are uh, really in an exciting time point. Uh, there's a lot of disruption happening, there's a lot of dig digitalization, there is a lot of movement in the field and we almost call this the biological revolution because we're looking into ways that instruments and technologies and products can work together similar to the concept of Internet of Things, there is Internet of Health Things where you connect different devices, diagnostics instruments and even treatment devices. And I know Hector and his development team are working very heavily on, on expanding on that and ensuring that we are positioning ourselves for a more autonomous future in the life science industry. And that requires of course a lot of data collection, uh, and putting data to use so that we can ensure that researchers and uh, caregivers can make better decisions faster because that's what it's all about in the life science industry. So we really have four uh, core industrial ecosystems that we work with and are expanding and, and that's next generation tissue engineering. So for instance, printing of organs and tissues. Uh, we're working with next generation cell line development. We're working with next generation diagnostics and next generation multi-omics. And those are really the four areas that we're going to expand on and they are a big part of Health 4.0. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Hector, for coming here today and congrats again on the, on the award. Thank, thank you, you so much for having us and thank you so much, Sweden Buyer, for this award.